Hi everyone! Today I want to share with you some of the best fillers for a cut flower garden. And you know, foliage and fillers are really the backbone of a cut flower garden. They provide bulk, interest, and character to arrangements. And a steady supply of both foliage and filler flowers will keep your designs looking lush and balanced. Plus, your garden will be a balanced ecosystem, brimming with variety, life, and abundance. Now you can often find wonderful foliage cuts right in your existing landscape just by taking a look at the shrubs on your property. Things like forsythia, dervella, boxwood, or even nine bark make excellent foliage cuts and continue to produce all season long. But when it comes to fillers, instead of using the shrubs on my landscape, I really rely almost completely on annuals that I grow from seed because they just bring so much to the table, so much interest, so much character, and so much bang for your buck at the end of the day. A small 99 cent packet of seed can give you a ginormous drift of really whatever your heart desires. So let's head over and take a look at some of my favorite fillers for your cut flower garden. Now first on my list just has to be Bupleurum because look at these super tall, cool, and almost wiry stems. The foliage on Bupleurum is beautiful. It's kind of a gray green color, oval shaped leaves, and then it gets these beautiful lime green yellow flowers, and it's just absolutely stunning. Now Bupleurum only produces one cut per seed so it's a really good idea if you like Bupleurum to sow it successively about every two to three weeks for a steady supply and I like to harvest it when the flowers are totally open and by doing so I get a really long and wonderful vase life. Next on my list is Aurelia, and just look at the beautiful grace and elegance that Aurelia adds to the garden border, but it's also a wonderful cut flower. It has these beautiful lacy white blooms that are then followed by these gorgeous green star-like seed pods, both which work well as fillers in bouquets. The flowers are born on well-branched plants, but for me, the benefit of growing Orlea is not so much as using it as a cut, but as attracting beneficial insects like soldier beetles into my garden, which will eat all my aphids for me. Next on my list is yarrow, and yarrow is a long-lived perennial flower that has flat-topped heads that comes in a wide variety of colors. You can get it in white, pink, peach, yellow, pretty much any color you want. There's a variety out there for you. Yarrow is really easy to grow from seed. It has this beautiful fern-like foliage, and it also attracts a wide range of beneficial insects. Ladybugs, lacewings, damselflies, and parasitic wasps all love yarrow so just another great reason to add it to the cutting garden now next on my list is larkspur which looks very similar to delphinium but in my opinion is light years easier to grow it comes in shades of blue purple pink mauve and white and it seems like they're always coming out with new and interesting colors to try the blooms can be either single or double and when you plant them in the fall you get these really really tall spikes of flowers some of these are almost six feet tall so if you have a really grand design you're working on or maybe you just want the biggest and tallest bucket of flowers ever try a fall planting of larkspur and let them overwinter as baby plants and this will be the result now the next filler on my list is saponaria and I absolutely love saponaria. In fact, I think I'm in love with it, but it produces these gorgeous branching stems of either pink or white flowers, depending on what variety you're growing. And the leaves are beautiful as well. They almost have a waxy, almost succulent texture to them. And they're a beautiful gray green color, one cut from a saponaria seed, but you can see it's a wonderfully well 
single branched plant. So this is one to succession plant as well for a steady supply of saponaria all season. Next up is my personal favorite filler flower and that is Dara. Dara is a beautiful humble flower that comes in shades of mauve, eggplant. You might have heard it referred to as chocolate queen and slice, but it's all the same plant. Here in zone 6b, I can either do a fall or a spring planting. You can direct sow it, you can start it inside. It's very forgiving. And basically the foliage on Dara is lower on the plant and then it produces these really, really long, tall, strong stems. And I just absolutely adore it. I can never have enough. Some people say that Dara wilts in the vase for them right after harvest. And what I find is that when Dara first emerges, the sides of Dara face upwards towards the heaven like an open cup. But then gradually they settle and lay flat. And then even a little bit later than that, they face downward like an open umbrella. And I find that either flat or facing downward like an open umbrella is really the best way to harvest Dara to avoid that wilting that can sometimes happen. Now next on my list is bachelor's buttons and I think bachelor's buttons is one of the easiest flowers to grow from seed. Just stick it in the ground, bury it with a little soil water and walk away and in just a few weeks time you'll be blessed with this gorgeous stand of bachelor's buttons often called cornflower. But cornflower comes in a wide variety of colors. You see I have this beautiful dark mauve which is called black button. You also have blues like blue boy, pink, pinks, whites, and once again, they're always coming out with new and interesting colors. The foliage on bachelor's buttons almost reminds me of a grassy foliage. It's almost insignificant in nature, but really you can get so many wonderful cuts off bachelor's buttons, and I like to harvest them when the flowers are about a half open. Next on my list is one of the flowers from my childhood that really is just so meaningful, and that is nigella. Nigella is sometimes called love in a mist or even devil in a bush, but we're talking about the same flower here. It's this beautiful star-shaped flower that comes in shades of true blue, white, purple, pink, mauve. But what I really love about Nigella is these gorgeous seed pods that are formed after the flowers fade. You can use them green and fresh arranging. You can wait for them to dry on the plant and harvest them as dried flowers when they're brown. There's really just a plethora of uses when it comes to nigella and it couldn't be easier to grow. It really prefers to be directly sown into the ground in very early spring for a really nice tall stand of plants, but you can grow it any time of the year and it will bless you with these gorgeous flowers. And did I mention they're actually blue? I mean, just look at that, that's gorgeous. Next on our list is another one of my personal favorites, and that is the star flower. When star flower first emerges, it puts on this beautiful white flower that the bees adore. But the reason why I grow it is for these beautiful seed pods that are formed after the blooms fade. They're globe-like seed pods, and they're almost a bronzy green color, just absolutely phenomenal fresh or dried. The white flowers are great in fresh arrangements as well, and they have long, somewhat wiry stems with this beautiful silvery green foliage. This is one of those filler flowers that I'll always grow, so easy to grow. I find it's really best to just directly sow it into the garden, and it takes off in no time at all. Next on my list, and another personal favorite, is Feverfew. Feverfew has beautiful white or yellow flowers. It's a spray flower, so you get multiple flower heads per stem. They're great fresh, they're great dried. Generally, they're considered a perennial in zones five and higher, but when you grow Feverfew for cutting, most people grow them as an annual grown from seed, and they just pump out the blooms and give me a really tall flush early on, and then secondary cuts that are a little bit shorter, but still usable in designs and definitely usable for drying. I love the next filler flower on our list so much that I barely have any of it left in the garden just because I've been cutting it with great abandon lately. But you can see this is the beautiful flower called honeywort or Cerinth Major. Beautiful, long, very strong stems with this succulent gray-green foliage. But look at these gorgeous drooping flower heads. I see shades of purple, 
blue, different shades of blue and green. It almost reminds me of a floral opal somehow. And Sorinth is really easy to grow from seed. I find that direct seeding it works best. The seeds are quite big. They almost look like a small pebble. And the only problem with Sorinth that can happen is that it can get quite wilty after harvest. So I find that harvesting it as early in the day as possible, even as early as 5 a.m. in the morning, really, really helps. Also, using a product called Quick Dip will help significantly. You just harvest your syrinth, dip it into the Quick Dip for a few seconds, and then put it into water. And basically, Quick Dip kind of just acts like a straw, allowing kind of that free flow of water up to the flower head. But even with that extra step, it's really worth growing Sorinth Major. Next on our list is Ami Magus. And Ami Magus explodes with these white lacy flowers on tall, strong, somewhat wiry stems. And they're really ideal for wedding work. But what I really love to do with Ami Magus is to dye them all different colors. If you just add a bit of food coloring into a bucket of water, you can have a rainbow of Ami Magus that you can use in all kinds of creative designs. And I do find it best to harvest Ami Magus when it's fully open, and then you won't have any problem with it wilting in the base. Next on my list is straw flower. And straw flower has so many redeeming qualities and so many great uses. First of all, it's really easy to grow from a seed and very easy to collect the seed for the next season. Also, you can use them fresh in arrangements. For this, you would wanna do the wiggle test where the head moves with the stem rather than flopping around in contrast to the stem. You can also use them dry. Here in this case, you would wanna harvest them when you don't see any pollen showing in the center. But whether or not you choose to use straw flower fresh or dried, if you've never grown them before, give them a try because they're fabulous and give you so much interest. And I just love the sound they make when you run your fingers against them. Next on our list is Bells of Ireland, and Bells of Ireland produces bright green, bell-shaped calyxes that are centered with tiny white blooms. These blooms have a lovely sour apple scent that add freshness to an arrangement. And I find it best to harvest Bells of Ireland when they're at least halfway open and green, but you can also use them in dried arrangements as well. Next on our list is Corn Cockle, and Corn Cockle is a cool season cutting flower that comes in both pink and white White. The flowers remind me almost of perennial geraniums, and the foliage reminds me of bachelor's buttons. It's very easy to grow from seed and great to add a little bit of air and sparkle into a design. And last on my list is an annual version of Monarda called Lombata. Here are the plants, and I'll show you some in bloom across the screen. But there are these beautiful plants that are easy to grow from seed. They always take a while when you grow them from seed. You almost might think something's wrong but that's just normal when it comes to this plant. They'll just kind of sit there for a while and then all of a sudden, bam, they'll put on tons of height really quickly. But when they're in bloom, they get these beautiful stacked whorl blooms in a pinky purple color and they just look absolutely stunning in arrangements. Now it seems almost impossible to know when and how to end this list of the best fillers for a cut flower garden. I think I could just go on and on all day, but I think the moral of the story is to grow what you love and bring your personality into the bouquet. There's so many varying textures, forms, and colors out there to choose from. Grow whatever makes your heart sing and just try to mix it up with different forms, textures throughout the growing season so that you always have a steady supply of fillers to choose from. Well, I sure hope this video was helpful and I'll see you sometime soon. Bye!